Hello, it's Andrew from Party Meeple and welcome to the internet. Today I'd like to talk about the game that I have played on the table more times than any other game in our collection. At least more times since I've been logging games on the Board Game Geek um, logging facility. Um, and I've been doing that since 2004. The game I'd like to talk about is Carcassonne. This game came out in the early noughties and a friend of mine basically fell in love with it. So I got myself a copy and I played it and I was like, oh, it's cute, it's all right. Then I went and visited him and we spent an afternoon having a beer, eating some cheese or something and playing some Carcassonne and I didn't win a game. And this guy plays games better than I do, but he's not that much better than me. And in fact, I was like, I think I was like six nil down at the end. And that's the point where I started thinking, there's a lot more to this game than just luck. So today I'd like to have a little chat about a few basic principles in playing Carcassonne. And for those that stay to the end of the video, there'll be a giveaway. And you can also get to hear me uh, sing a song I've written about Carcassonne, which I call Carcassonne. So let's have a little talk about how Carcassonne works, because not all of you may have played or heard of Carcassonne, um, because the cult of the new in board gaming tends to ignore older things. The FOMO, the dreaded FOMO. Anyway, in Carcassonne, you lay tiles to create let's call it a map and you must lay the tiles so the edges of the tiles match the edge they're butting up to and after you've laid a tile you can put a meeple a follower meeple on the tile that you have laid and claim part of that tile the part you claim could be a road or a city and there's some other things as well but let's keep it simple so let's assume we have this layout in front of us and we've drawn this tile we can put it in this position um, because the two city edges like match but we could not put the meeple on the city because there's already a black meeple in the city you can only claim something if no one else is already there so the only place we could put this meeple would be on the road this would be a terrible move we've made the city bigger for someone else because that's how you score points with big things um, and we've only scored one segment of road so now we have a loose idea about how Carcassonne works. Here's a few thoughts on how to play the game a little better when you get involved in it. First of all, know the tile deck. While it's impossible to know the 70 odd tiles, 65, 65 I think, tiles that are in the deck, there are a few tiles that you can remember that are important to the game. There are six churches called cloisters in the rules. Two of them have roads. There are five different blocking tiles, um, two, that are up, uh, two that are at 90 degrees to each other and three that are on opposite sides of the tiles. These are really good tiles to keep people out of your cities when people are trying to steal your shit. There is also a four-way road cross section and something I like to call the bastard tile because it's just city all the way around. And while a new player might think, wow, what a great tile, it's going to make my city bigger. Anyone who plays a bit of Carcassonne knows that if someone puts that tile on you, it makes finishing your city harder, especially if it's towards the end of the game. And unfinished cities at the end of the game are only worth half points. So that's something to consider. Number one, think of the tile mix. Number two, think about what you can do to stop your opponent from scoring points. In an example we have here, we have this tile and we can put it in a few places. We can use it to join up the two cities so that they will have to share points with us. And in fact, if the tile layout developed like this, we could use it to steal the city because we would have two meeples to their one. Or we can place the tile like this so it makes it harder for our opponent 
to finish their city, like a road facing into an open city tile. That's a pain to have to deal with because suddenly the number of tiles in the tile deck um, is restricted that will finish your city. And as we've said before, unfinished cities are worth half points. And the other thing to consider here is when your city's not finished, the meeples you've invested in it stay on the board. So if you need them to do something else, to like expand somewhere else because you've used all your meeples, then they're effectively trapped. So playing this tile like this, that's actually pretty damn good. The third thing I'd like to talk about is meeple management. And this sort of goes with farmers because one of the places you can place your meeples is on the green bits of the tile and it's then called a farmer and it stays for the entire game, you'll never get it back um, and it is part of end game scoring where completed cities uh, are worth three points next to every farm that you have the most meeples in. So it's very tempting like early in the game to see an area of farm that has a lot of small cities around it because they're worth three points regardless of how big they are and want to put farmers down but this is ne not, not this is not necessarily a good idea I don't think so let's look at this example here basically what we have is two farms that are separated and it's Black's turn to play the tile and they have this road tile that they could put right here which joins up the farms so that both meeples will have to share the points um, if this tile didn't come out black would get three points and blue would get nine um, there's a fair bit of discussion about how farmers were overpowered in Carcassonne but I have won games without any farmers on the board uh, the trick is to break the farms up with roads and buildings or roads and cities um, so they never get too big uh, because you can very quickly go down the rabbit hole of trying to control all the farms on the board and use up all your meeples. You only have a certain amount of meeples. When they're on the board, they're used, and this discounts the effect of your future turns. So I think you should always at least have one meeple in the bank, uh, maybe two, um, and then towards the end of the game, you can commit them where you see best. You'll notice with this um, video, the tiles that I've used in my examples are really, really beaten up. That's because they come from my travel edition of Carcassonne. Wait a minute. This little sucker. Um, I bought this fairly early on. I can't remember when this came out. Maybe I'll put a date up here. But um, it was actually quite a bit more expensive than the regular Carcassonne. But you'll notice it's a little bit smaller. It's about three quarters, maybe two thirds of the size of Carcassonne. So you could actually play Carcassonne um, on a fold out table in an airplane even. A bit tricky, but we managed to squeeze it in. Uh, but it's ideal for pubs and bars. Um, and in fact, this Carcassonne has swum in beer twice uh, and it still works, uh, which if a regular Carcassonne swam in B, I can tell you the tiles like swell up terribly. I'm not sure that you can get this anymore. Um, Z-Man own the rights, or sorry, Z-Man, because it's an American company, own the rights to Carcassonne in English now, I believe. And they should put a travel version out with waterproof tiles that can be carried around in a bag this big. You'll notice the actual bag is the scoreboard. Everything about this is wonderful and that's why the tiles are so completely worn out. Um, in fact I've stopped playing it. It sits like quietly on my shelf uh, with a bunch of uh, fond memories of mates. Of the 300 games of Carcassonne I played on a table this is probably responsible for maybe 250. Anyway in other Carcassonne news uh, about a year and a half ago, a friend of mine who's in a band, the Kill Devil Kills, uh, who've been going around Perth for longer than I can remember anyway, and, and touring the Europe, blah, 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 and touring uh, the US and Europe, um, is, you know, fairly, in fact, I'd like, he's down the board game rabbit hole very hard, actually. Um, and so about 
I think about 18 months ago, I challenged him, write a song about your favorite game and do a video clip. Um, I'll go first. You don't have to do anything because that way, if I never get around to it, he doesn't have to put any work in. But I've got around to it. And here's my video clip at the end of this, um, at the end of this video. Uh, regular Carcassonne players will get the joke. The other thing is, um, I would like to give away a few copies of my new game, which has just arrived, 60 Second Cocktail. Um, in fact, I've just finished unloading it from the truck today. The first person to comment from Europe, the first person to comment from the UK, and the first person to comment from anywhere in Asia or anywhere in North America, I will send you a free copy. Put a comment below. I will comment back to you uh, saying, well done and I will send you a copy of 60 Second Cocktail. Or maybe, maybe I'll send you a Party Meeple Care Pack, which will contain a copy of 60 Second Cocktail. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. I hope you get yourself a copy of Carcassonne. Hey, it's not my game, but I still think it's a wonderful game that everyone should own. Um, and Zedman, how about doing one of these if you're not already? I had a look and I couldn't see any, so I'm I suspicious. I'm suspicious there's no travel carcass on in production at the moment, and quite frankly, a beer-proof, wine-proof carcass on that can go on a sticky table and get cleaned up afterwards. That's a good thing. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more party meeple videos. <laughs>